So today we're gonna to be picking 10 notes and a fragrance that best represents each note. So stay tuned. Hey, what's going on? Hunter here and welcome back to my channel. And if you are new, what I do is I make fragrance related content. So if you love fragrances, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below and also be sure to follow my fragrance Instagram page. But this is gonna be part three of 10 notes and a fragrance that best represents each note. So if you are familiar with this, pretty much pick 10 random notes and I pick a fragrance, one fragrance per each note that I think best represents that note. And I think this can be a little bit informative because say you wanna smell like, um, lavender or you want to see what lavender fragrances smell like i'll pick one note for one fragrance for the lavender note and then you can go out and test out that fragrance and get a feel of lavender and etc etc with a whole bunch of different notes and there's pretty much hundreds of notes and this is part three and there's gonna be many parts to come so if you missed the first two parts definitely go back and check those out we covered 20 notes in within those two videos and there are some great notes but in this one I have some phenomenal notes as well, and I cannot wait to share a fragrance that best represents each one. So let's get right into it. So the first note we're gonna be talking about is the note of rose, which of course is one of the best floral notes in perfumery. Uh, they can smell a bunch of different ways. Sometimes they can smell sparkling and clean. Sometimes they can smell very red, jammy, and earthy. So yeah, now I think I got one of the best rose-based fragrances, and this one actually changed very quickly because when I made this list, I had a different rose fragrance for it, but this one definitely took its place. And of course, I'm talking about Zaharoff's Signature Rosé. Now, with Signature Rosé, it actually contains two different roses. One is Turkish Rose and the other is Bulgarian Rose. And the way they pretty much mix together, and especially in the opening, you pretty much get a bouquet of roses. It's very jammy, very red. It's not like your pink, clean, sparkling rose, which I like the way it's done in here. So yeah, if you're looking for one of the best roast fragrances, especially if you're a man, and you, you might look at florals or roses in general as more of a uh, feminine kind of note, you're definitely gonna wanna check this one out because it does have other notes, of course. It has some resinous qualities, very warming. It has a little bit of oud in the base, but yeah, the rose in here is by far one of my favorites and it's so well done. And that's exactly why I'm picking this to represent the note. So the next note up is actually a citrus note and it is lemon. So lemon is used in a lot of fragrances just as an opening and as a kind of a backbone to any fragrance to give it a nice uplifting kind of citrus vibe. But this one I think has done it the absolute best to capture that lemon. And of course, I'm going with Aqua de Palmas Colonia. The original Colonia, guys, this fragrance is actually over 100 years old. And of course, you get that Italian lemon. And man, they do, they do it the best I've ever smelled. It's so natural smelling. It still has that kind of zesty, kind of a tangy, tart kind of quality to it, which lemon does. But yeah, if you're just looking for the note of lemon to smell in a fragrance, I gotta highly recommend Aqua di Parma's Colonia. They pretty much mastered the lemon note. Of course, Italian lemon is the best you can get, and the way they blend it together is perfect. Now, this is an eau de cologne concentration, so it's not gonna be like a nuclear fragrance. It's not gonna last forever or anything like that. It is a little bit more light and airy, but it does represent lemon the best in my opinion. So the next note is actually a very tropical fruity note. And of course I'm talking about the note of melons. Now melons is, isn't really used that often in perfumery. It is a little bit unique and I don't have many notes that contain melon as a dominant note at least, but this one I think represents it the best and it is on the cheaper side of things, which is great. For Crombie and Fitch, first instinct. Now with this one, of course this is a designer fragrance, very crowd pleasing, but it does actually do the tropical melon note very nicely. Just the way it comes across, especially in the opening, it's just so good. It smells so tropical, like I'm somewhere in like um, the Bahamas or somewhere uh, very tropical and by the ocean. And yeah, that's just how it comes across to me. It's very well done, especially for the price. Like I said, this is a on the cheaper side of things. You can get a bottle of this for around like 30 bucks or so. You can even find them at like your local uh, rack stores, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, Burlington. So if you love the smell of melons, you want to get a fragrance with melon, you have to check out Abercrombie & Fitch First Instinct. So this next note up is actually the note of dirt. So like dirt, soil, anything that falls under that kind of category, that's the note we're going with. Now, obviously dirt, I mean, some people might like the smell of dirt, um, but I know it's not common in perfumery at all to smell like wet soil, but yeah, 
I think if you're looking for that note in a fragrance, this one is by far the best. Look no further than Emwaj's Figment Man. I gotta say right off the bat though, this is by far one of my most daring fragrances in my entire collection. This one is very hard to wear. The only time I really wear this one, if I'm doing like an um, outdoor kind of event or like a hunting event or something like that, is the only time I actually pull this one out. This is not a work fragrance. This is not a date fragrance or anything along those lines, guys. This one is extremely muddy, extremely animalic. How I explained it in my review, it's kind of like a Cheeto that just got done rolling around in the mud. That's pretty much how this smells. Just picture that in your head and the smell of that. It's pretty much bottled up in Figment Man. And what's funny is the last time I wore this one, I was actually with my mom in the car. When I got in the car, she's like, what are you wearing? You smell like mold. You smell like a uh, very earthy. And I thought it was hilarious. She actually had to roll down all the windows to try to air out the car because also this is an M wash, of course, and M washes are known for nuclear performance. And this one definitely is a beast mode as well, but not my favorite M wash, not my favorite fragrance. But if you're looking for a dirt smelling fragrance, you have to check out Figment Man. The next note up is actually an animalic note. Um, and a lot of people don't really think about it when you think of animalic notes, you think of like civet, castorium, ambergris, things like that. But the note I'm talking about is beeswax. So obviously it comes from an animal bees and it is very waxy. So yeah, it is animalic. And if you're looking for a beeswax heavy fragrance, which isn't so common, um, you have to check out on number nine's Dubai Black Sapphire. Now with this one, it is very waxy, it's very resinous and it's very beeswax heavy as well. Yeah, this one is very funky. I gotta say that right off the bat. It does have some oud in there as well, which is very heavy. You get a ton of oud. I think this is pretty much like Bond Number no. 9's It Oud fragrance, which is weird though, because when you go in Fragrantica, oud is actually not listed for Black Sapphire, but if you go to Bond Number no. 9's website, they do list agarwood or oud, of course. But yeah, if you're looking for beeswax and you wanna see what that smells like, um, especially in a fragrance, you have to check out Bottom Nine's Black Sapphire. But just like the previous one with Figment Man, which is one of my most daring fragrances, this one definitely is as well. It's very barnyardy, very kind of um, animalic, very fecal smelling. So be careful, but yeah, it represents beeswax perfectly. So the next note up is also a very kind of earthy, dirty note. And I'm talking about the note of truffles. Now, I'm not talking about the chocolate truffles, not that. I'm speaking about the mushroom truffles that grow under the earth or in the ground pretty much. If you're looking for that kind of uh, note in a fragrance, you absolutely have to check out Tom Ford's Black Orchid. This is definitely known for that truffle note. Of course you do get the orchid note in here. You get some kind of chocolatey accord as well, but that mushroom earthy truffle note definitely shines, especially when you wear this one on skin. On my skin, at least, that truffle note comes out so heavy and so strong, and it's very earthy, and I just honestly love the way it smells. It has kind of like a luxurious, kind of um, delicate kind of smell. Man, I love it so, so much. If you ever had like mushroom truffles, you can eat those. Like if you spread them on like food and stuff like that, they're very good. And yeah, if you're looking for that note in a fragrance, you want to see how it smells like or anything like that, you absolutely have to check out Tom Ford's Black Orchid. And by the way, this is actually the first Tom Ford to ever be released under his brand back in 2006. And it's been a classic and pretty much an icon from Tom Ford ever since. So yeah, Black Orchid represent the truffle note perfectly. Okay, so the next note up is actually the note of sandalwood. So with sandalwood, it is a wood, of course. Honestly, it's not my favorite note when it comes to woods. I much prefer like oak or birch or oud, of course. But yeah, sandalwood sometimes come across like uh, solid dust, sometimes come across creamy, sometimes it comes across more like dill pickles. And honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of the note at all. Like Santal 33, I do not like that fragrance. But this one, I think does sandalwood amazingly. And I absolutely love this fragrance so much. And of course, I'm talking about Fragrance Dubois Santal Complet. It's in the name Santal, mean sandalwood. But with this fragrance, you do get a ton of sandalwood. It is very creamy, kind of um, milky sandalwood. But that actually goes along with the coconut you find in here as well. Coconut and sandalwood work perfect together. This one does have a slight tropical feel but not too too much where you could still wear it in like the fall time and things like that but this one honestly just smells like heaven to me it's so sophisticated so classy and just so well done obviously you would expect that from a house like fragrance Duval, which by the way is one of my favorite niche houses in general i love what they do all natural ingredients everything like that especially with their ouds and things they do have their own oud gardens and 
yeah, I just respect these people so, so much. But if you're looking for sandalwood fragrances and you don't really like that dill pickle sandalwood, no, I guess if you think about it, you still do get that quality, but it's not like your sawdusty kind of sandalwood. It's much more, more refined. So yeah, Santal Complet is representing sandalwood for me. Okay, so the next note up on the list is actually one of my favorite notes of all time, most likely in my top three. And of course, I'm talking about the note of patchouli. So patchouli is very earthy. Sometimes it can have a minty quality. It's very green, herbaceous. So the fragrance I'm choosing the best represent patchouli, in my opinion, and from my collection is, of course, Tiziana Terenzi's Urza. Wow, guys, this is an absolute patchouli bomb. So if you love patchouli, you love the smell of it, and you want to smell like that in a fragrance, you absolutely have to check out Urza. Now, with Urza, there's a lot more going on. You have some dry fruits, which gives it a nice dusty quality. You also have a very oody kind of uh, base in here as well. But that patchouli absolutely shines, and in my opinion, is the main player in this fragrance. It is a little bit similar to like By Killian Straight to Heaven, which has dry fruits and patchouli, just with added oud. So it is a little bit more funky, a little bit more earthy and dirty, in my opinion, than Straight to Heaven. And I actually prefer this one. But yeah, the patchouli note in here is done so well. It smells very natural. And if you don't know, like patchouli is associated with like hippies and how they smell and stuff like that. Um, that's just what they, I think that's what hippies and stuff wear. It's patchouli and I just love the smell so, so much. And this is actually one of my favorite fragrances in my entire collection. I think this stuff is an absolute masterpiece. I've talked about it time and time again. So yeah, patchouli for me, I gotta go with Tiziana Terenzi's Urza. Even though this one is pretty expensive, I just think it does patchouli the best. All right, so the next note up is actually the note of Cypress, which is a classic man's kind of note that's been used in fragrances for years and years. It's very green, very herbal, very earthy as well. And of course, I'm talking about the best fragrance to represent Cypress is Rosa Parfum's Apex. Of course, you have it in this beautiful black and green bottle. This is also, I believe, their newest launch as well, is Apex. And I gotta say, of course, when it comes to Roja Dove, when he gets his hands on a fragrance, he does not mess up. And he did not mess up at all with this one. I absolutely love it. And it is probably the strongest fragrance, especially from the Parfum Cologne line. This one is beast mode, I gotta say that. But it does have a ton of Cypress, and Cypress is used in a lot of Sheepra fragrances. That's what makes it a Sheepra. It's very green, very woody. This one is also pretty smoky as well. I am gonna like a lot of smoke in the composition. But yeah, if you're just looking for a Shepra, uh Cypress dominant fragrance, that's it. it's a little bit more modern. You obviously do have a lot of classic old school fragrances, but I think Rosa did a phenomenal job making a Cypress heavy fragrance very modern with Apex. So definitely check this one out for that note. So last but not least on this list is the note of tobacco. Now tobacco is also one of my favorite notes, probably in the top five. I love tobacco and how it smells, especially in fragrances. And there's a ton of great tobacco heavy fragrances. Obviously like the first one that comes to mind most of the time is like Tom Ford's Tobacco Vanille, uh, which I don't own a bottle that is another great tobacco fragrance, but it is pretty much outplayed and very popular. This one I think represents tobacco very, very well, especially at the price you can get it. Of course, I'm talking about Zaharoff's Tobacco, Signature Tobacco, guys. Of course, Zaharoff's making another entry on this list because so Harlow does not make bad fragrances at all, especially from everything I've tried. But with this one, you do get like a, that cherry pipe, dusty kind of a tobacco, very masculine as well. It's almost like a honey tobacco as well. I get some kind of like honey accord in here. And what's weird is when I first tried this one, I get some kind of like a, like a hay smell. And I'm not sure where that's coming from or if anybody else gets that. But it does kind of smell like hay to me, um, like a barn or something like that which isn't a bad thing in my opinion. I love that smell. But yeah, if you're looking for a good tobacco heavy fragrance, you have to check out Zahara Signature Tobacco. And just look at this awesome bottle with that kind of honeyish brown juice. It just looks incredible. And I think this is like a sticker that comes on cigars as well. So yeah, he knows what he's doing when it comes to tobacco fragrances. And man, this one is by far definitely making this list. So that's gonna wrap it up for part three of 10 notes. I hope you guys did enjoy it. Let me know down below uh, what fragrances you would choose for each of these notes as well. I know I do put a lot of niche in these because in my opinion, niche fragrances obviously represent notes a lot better than designers that most of the time use like synthetics and stuff like that. So I do try to mix it up a little bit. We did have a little bit more cheapies in here and some middle line fragrances as well and some niche of course. But let me know down below some fragrance you would choose and like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you haven't already and I'll catch all you in the next video. Take care everybody.